Welcome to CG Dive. In this video we'll see how we can switch arms and legs of a character between IK and FK mode in the middle of an animation. I'll be using a model rigged with Rigify, but AutoRig Pro and custom rigs will work the same way. By the way, I have a video about posing characters where I showed how to switch between IK and FK for posing. Give it a watch if you like. It might be useful to you if you're new to working with rigged characters. While IK and FK switching will be the main topic of this video, we'll cover other useful techniques as well. I'll show you how to work with video references inside Blender. I'll try to demonstrate a solid animation workflow as far as I'm able to. I'll show how to calculate motion paths and why that is useful and other techniques that I hope you'll be able to use in your animation work. Now let's cover the basics. I'll assume that you know what IK and FK modes are. If not, then check out the posing video that I mentioned earlier. To switch between the two, you usually have a rig property somewhere. So for Rigify, that is, if I select the rig and go to pose mode, select any of the arm widgets and go to end panel or the side panel, item, rig name properties, I'll find the IK FK switch slider. So the default of zero means IK, so I can grab the IK handle and move it around. And if I crank it up to one, then I am switching to FK mode. And then the FK widgets will move the character. And in most cases, you don't want any values other than zero or one. IK FK value of 0 0.5 makes no sense in most cases. Now, as you saw, if you have the IK and FK widgets or controls at a different position and switch, then the arm will gradually move from one mode to the other. But most of the time you want to switch between the two seamlessly and Rigify has a handy tool for that. Uh, these FK to IK and IK to FK buttons will allow you to snap one set of the controls to the other. So for example, if I want the FK to align with the IK controls, I can just press FK to IK and that will snap these controls. And now I'm still in IK mode, but if I switch to FK mode, it will be completely seamless. There is no sliding of the arm, as you can see. And again, if I move the FK and then I want the IK to align with it, I'll press IK to FK. And now I can switch to IK and it's going to be seamless. And of course we have to talk about keyframing. How do we tell Blender at which frame it has to switch between the two modes? As you probably know, the keyframe for inserting a keyframe is I. So if you press it in the viewport, you'll be shown this menu, which allows you to keyframe mostly transforms and some properties. To keyframe an individual property, you just hover over it and press I. Or if I undo, I can also right click on the property and choose insert keyframe. It is the same thing. Now we did insert the keyframe, but there is no keyframe visible here in the timeline. So it is important to know that for Rigify, these keyframes are actually on this um, gear icon here. When I select the gear icon, I can actually see the keyframe for the IKFK switch. So now I'm going to give you a quick pointless, but still practical example of a seamless IKFK switch. So we are in IK mode now. So let's keyframe our uh, IK controls. I'll keyframe location and rotation by pressing I, and then I'll move forward in time, create a pose, create keyframes again. And now let's say that from this point, I want to switch to FK. So I can set IK FK to one and record a keyframe. And now if I try to preview this animation, you'll see that the arm is trying to following the IK animation, but it is also going back to the FK. And that is because the IK FK value is changing from zero to one uh, between the frames of zero and 40. So one way to solve this is to go to the previous frame, set the IK FK value to one and record a keyframe. And now if you preview the, anim the animation, we have the movement of the IK controls and then immediately on the next frame, the arm snaps to the FK controls. So now, if I just select the FK controls and snap them to the IK and record a keyframe, we'll have a seamless switch, right? So that's nice, but there is one little problem with this technique, and that is if I look at my keyframes here for the IKFK switch, 
I need three keyframes to create this motion. So it would be nice if we can uh, just do, do it with two keyframes and we can. So I'm going to delete this keyframe here in between and then select both keyframes, press T and choose constant. Now, if I scrub through my action, you'll see that again, the uh, switch is seamless. So notice how the IKFK value stays at zero until it reaches frame 41 and then it switches to one. Uh, so if I switch to the graph editor, you'll see why that happens. This red curve is our IKFK value. And so if I select all keyframes and switch them to Bezier, which is the default, you'll see how we have this curve, which gradually goes from zero to one. If I switch again to constant, we have flat line, so a value of zero until the next keyframe. And then at the next keyframe that Blender encounters, it instantly changes the value to one. This will be the workflow for IK FK switch that I'll be using during the rest of the video. So I wanted to show it to you in a nice, simple example. And with that, I think we are ready to start working on our animation. Now I'll share a couple of Rigify related tips that may help you with the swinging motion that we'll be working on. So I'll unhide my meta rig. And for the most part, it is a very typical and standard meta rig. But if I go to the arms, I'm going to enable IK wrist pivot for both arms. And for the spine, I'm going to enable this custom pivot control. And this one I actually won't use in practice, but I'm going to show it to you quickly during the tutorial. So now I'm going to generate my rig. And so for the spine, the additional control is this control. I can move it anywhere and then it will become the pivot point of rotation of the torso. And I made a slight mistake. I didn't want the wrist pivot. I'm going to go back to the meta rig and the arms. And instead of um, IK wrist pivot, I want custom IK pivot. And I'm going to generate again. So the additional pivot is this thing here. And it works exactly as the one for the spine. You just move it anywhere where you need a pivot point. And now it becomes the pivot point for the IK arm. Okay. I'll be showing you how to use these in practice as we go along. Okay, so now let's talk about working with a video reference inside Blender. Of course, you can use a separate software for the video reference if you prefer, but it can be done right in Blender. And I think that has some advantages. And, and I'm not even going to discuss if using a reference is a good thing or a bad thing. Most professionals agree that references are necessary. And in this case, we'll stick very close to the reference. Uh, in other cases, you can use it just is a base and then add your own flavor to your animation. Anyway, uh, to import the action, I'm going to make some more room here and I'm going to switch this window to a video sequencer. And then I'll just drag and drop my video file into Blender, into the sequencer. And I'm going to change this option from sequencer to sequencer and preview. The lower strip here is audio, so I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it. And here is my video reference that I can view at any point while working on my animation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, since I'm going to be following this uh, reference exactly, I'll go to the end of the video and that is frame 156. And I'm going to change the end of my animation to 156. Okay. And in Blender, if you have a timeline and you press M in here, Blender places a so-called marker in the interface. And these markers can have different uses, but, but here I'm going to use them to mark the key frames or the key poses in this action. So for example, first we have the start and then the guy lowers his body to prepare for the jump. So here I would place another marker, then he extends his body. That would be another marker. So I'll come back when I'm done uh, placing my markers. Okay, I've placed my markers and as I said here, the body goes down. Here the body is fully extended. So to me, that is a key pose. Here at this frame, he grabs the bar. Here he is hanging from the bar. Then he pulls himself up. Then he extends the body to create momentum. Then he let himself go and swings back. And then he keeps swinging backwards. Here is the highest point that he reaches. 
Then he actually lets go of the bar, which is also important, but we'll handle this later. Then he let himself fall, and here he reaches the ground. Then he bends his knees to absorb some of the shock of, of the landing, and then he jumps back up. Okay, these key poses are not absolutes, and I'm not sure if I place them perfectly, but they will help us create an okay looking animation. And in terms of IK-FK switching, we want to start the animation with the legs in IK and arms in FK. And then at this point, we'll switch the legs to FK. That is one of the reasons why I marked this keyframe. And then as he grabs the, the bar, the arms will switch to IK. And then at this point, the arms will switch back to FK. And when he lands here, the legs will switch back to IK. So there will be plenty of switching. I hope it will be a good exercise. This was the theory and preparation part. In the following three videos, we are going to practice by creating this bar swing animation. I'll be sharing these videos on YouTube in the coming weeks. If you want to get them right away, you can check out my Gumroad subscription service or Patreon, it's the same thing. Basically, I release new videos on YouTube once a week and anything that I haven't yet released is on Gumroad or Patreon. So you'll be getting early access and other bonuses like blend files, progress files, references and so on. And you'll be supporting the channel. Big thanks to everyone who is already a supporter. Please click like, subscribe and tune in next time.